I've got a story for you guys. It's been on my mind for several days now. Okay, here we go. I was uh, doing my morning walk that I do with the dogs every morning in the neighborhood. You know, with our dogs and our neighbors, neighbors and dogs, it's really important uh, that we are as kind and hospitable uh, to the neighbors and people that we encounter just within our block. We've really gotten to know a lot of our neighbors, which I think is incredibly important nowadays. And uh, it's made for a wonderful place to live. You know, not, not everyone has dogs. Not everyone understands dogs, which is fine. This is not a dog video. <laughs> I just want to lay the groundwork a little bit. I'm just trying to uh, keep it nice and simple for you, but a little bit of a background. So I'm walking the dogs. I believe I'm wearing a ball cap pretty early. I can't remember some sweats, a t-shirt, maybe, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, warm jacket. And uh, I'm a, a few doors down. And my two dogs are doing their business, number one. And I see right across the street from me a gentleman who's uh, double parked. Another thing I do, I just, you know, I'm, I'm always aware of my surroundings. And he's double parked in a neighbor's driveway. But I know that that neighbor, I know the neighbor, fairly acquainted with her, older lady, love her to death. And she, he's parked in the in her driveway. I'm like, all right. He gets out and he's looking my direction. And he starts yelling. I'm like, what's going on? And he's motioning right at me. And I kid you not, he says, those effing Mexicans. I'm like, Not that I'm not one, but I'm like, there's no one else here but me. So you're talking to me, right? I ignored it the first time. Keeps on, keeps on. Now, mind you, I've never seen this gentleman before in my life. Never before. Okay. Uh, maybe perhaps he's visited my neighbor. My neighbor, had, like I said, has a lot of... Uh, uh, family members, etc., that come and visit her. Wonderful. But I've never seen this guy before. So he's barking at something, saying that, you know, they come here and they're doing this and they're doing that. I'm just minding my own business, trying to get my dogs to move along. But then he says it again. Those effing Mexicans. And I, uh, it stops me and I, and I make sure there's no one else here around me. Right. And mind you, he's almost in the middle of the road and he's kind of talking at me, but he's talking to the passenger that's in his car. And I say, I, I, I'm sorry. Were you talking to me? And I didn't say it as an, an offense. I, I wasn't taking defense. I wasn't trying to throw it back at him. Because I was just like, what's going on? And he's like, no, no, look. You know, they come in graffiti. They graffiti. And I look. And there's street gang graffiti. Ryan McCollum behind me. That is the uh, the wall surrounding this this particular house apartment building. I was like, "Oh, okay, got it." And mind you, uh, we live in a neighborhood that has uh, that gang. I, I don't even know who they are. I know that they tag every once in a while. Sometimes it gets it's bad. Most of the time, they're a ghost uh, in the neighborhood. I said, oh, okay, you know. So I quickly registered it that he was angry at these kids or whoever did this, you know, did this graffiti and that they were Mexican. And he kind of takes a step towards me and he's saying, like, you know, they come here and they're doing this, repeating that. And he says, 
and I'm a minority. I'm a minority. And I was like, what is going on? Now, I'm going to tell you that this gentleman was either my age or older, mid-50s, maybe probably older, African-American gentleman. And I tried to diffuse the situation and say, you know what? It's not off. It's not in my in my in my opinion. It's often not about race. It's about taste. It's about ignorance. I'm trying to like you know play the Switzerland. Be cool, right? It's like no, no. It's 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 them. It's them. And I was just like, and he's getting hot, man. He's getting real hot, and he he's in the middle of the road, and you know, I, I I'm listening to him. I don't like again. I don't take the defense. I don't let him know. Well, I'm gonna save something. Hold on. He says he has a couple more words. I try to uh, to play like it's about ignorance. It's not about a person's race. But I'm like, you know what? Nothing's gonna be solved here in this moment. This man is just angry, and uh, I've done everything I can because. One, one wrong word or one phrase that comes out of my mouth or his mouth, you just never know. You need don't, I don't want to be a part of that. So I said, agree to disagree, sir, uh, but I got to go. And I went. So this happened to, excuse me, this happened several days ago, like I told you. And it really bothered me. Because I was trying to figure out, did I say or do anything wrong? What was happening? So I get back to my house and I, uh, I talk to Romy. I tell her about this. Right? And she's chill. <laughs> and she says, honey, he didn't think you were Mexican. I'm like, what? You don't look like a typical Mexican in regards to how non-Latinos see Mexicans. They don't. I do. And then, of course, that left me like days of like tripping out on that. You know, I, I, I was kind of kind of speechless because I know in just within my family, all the different shades of, you know, being a Chicano, Mexican American, <clears throat> that my mom, who's so fairly, fairly uh, has fair complexion, to where my dad is really Indio, I'm in the middle, and I see cousins, and we just have so many different looks. Uh, some are wedo, some are darker, some are mas Indio, some are mas negro. It's all beautiful, and I was like, wow. So then, he was complaining to me. About this, about how he how he saw something, and never once did he think that I was Mexican. Never once did I say, "You know, I'm Mexican," right? Because that would have turned that situation into something that I didn't want it to be. Because I could have taken the defense and say, "Hey, man, I'm Mexican. That's you're you're being offensive." I find that very offensive. And mind you, even to now, I'm not offended at what he said. Because that's 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 where he's at. And let me tell you, nobody is uh, a saint here. And when I mean that, I, I hear it from, from, from Latinos, from whites, from Asians to blacks. Uh, when they're very upset or frustrated at something or somebody, some some something like that comes out. So I, I got to start thinking about how we present ourselves. And I guess at that moment, I presented myself to him as someone who he saw he could tell his problems to. In his own way, he was telling his problems to. I was his outlet. I was his outlet. And like I said, you know, 
maybe if I was, you know, dressed a little differently, perhaps some of my, you know, older, older uh, Cholo cousins, you know, it would have been a different situation. Or as far as how he visually saw me. I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, I, I've often been a, a, a little different from the rest of my family in regards to like, you know, just how, just how I was raised compared to how my uh, East side, uh, relatives are raised. And I've always loved them. I never, never judged them, but for lack of better words, I was raised more, more gringo. And it's allowed me to slip in and out of, uh, different, uh, uh, cultural circles with these. I know how to talk to white people. I know how to talk to black people. I know how to talk to Asians, et cetera, et cetera. It's because I've lived amongst all of them. I've been friends amongst all of them. And again, <clears throat> it just speaks to how we are with, with people. And if I had taken it personally and I've been defensive, stood my ground, Fought for justice. Would I have gotten the result that I had wanted? What was my result? If you now, I'm going to say this and, and close it up. If you now were me in that situation, I know you guys have. I know everyone has been in that situation before. I know everyone has been confronted with someone. Maybe it's been on at work. Maybe it's with other family members. Maybe it's with a loved one. Here, complete stranger on the street in my own neighborhood. How would you have reacted? How would it have affected you? Would you have even cared? Now, the lady who he's a friend of, I love dearly. She's an elderly African-American woman who treats me and Romy with such a wonderful uh, grandmother love, grandmother grace. And I asked Romy, I go, should I say something to her? She said, no, just let it go. What for? And she's absolutely right. Because what I, what all those questions for me that I'm asking you, it goes back to my ego. Why am I doing that? So I could feel better? So, oh man, hey, what's up with your friend? Hey, I don't want them around. Hey, did you know? All of that feeds into the sickness, sick part of my ego. And I don't want any, any part of that. Now, I think. Obviously, race and, uh, you know, how, how we present ourselves is such a fascinating thing, especially in these times, especially with, uh, with everything that's going on. And we hear a lot about code switching I mean, going back to that, uh, slipping, out of, slipping out of different cultures. You know, some people are really thrown off by how maybe uh, our political leaders code switch. And it's like, it's nothing new, not, not from, you know, where, you know, not where I'm from, but necessarily there's the circles that I have, I have, I have swum in where it's like, yeah, you, you, you just, you, you talk and act differently with your family and friends. And you would, let's say, you know, at the office at a, you know, whatever function depending on the, the the look and feel of of the place which which if you're being inauthentic in the moment if you're being fake that's not a good thing but if you you know you get to turn on a little flavor here and there in yourself and people accept you that's fine now i bring this up because it's in our cultural of conversation the conversation of our culture right now because some people just can't fathom like well you know why would you you know how, how can someone change their speech how can someone walk differently how can someone act differently it's like well it happens so going back to this gentleman um i wanted to get this out to you guys the story and i think moving forward I might share a little bit more of these stories because I think these are probably profoundly more important to our everyday world in interactions with people than 
raging about whatever <clears throat> Hollywood item that comes out. We, we're still going to do those, of course. But, you know, with here, it's something very personal. So I want to know again, what are your what what are your inter interactions with that? Have you ever done it to the opposite? You know, I, I know we can get upset at things, uh, but at the end of the day, for me, thank God I'm I'm an, I'm a somewhat older man and a sober one, to where I I I could say with uh. I can say I passed that situation with an A. Did pretty good. Well, this is the Latino slant. And yes, I am Chicano. <laughs> Wherever you're at, keep your slant fuerte. Gracias.